excited to have you guys today because we read Just Mercy, um, which I'm sure Jackie and kind of let y'all know um, about the work of Brian Stevenson. And usually in this class every year, we go to Alabama um, to the Equal Justice Initiative Center. We haven't been able to do that the last two years, though, because of COVID. Um, so it's kind of amazing that both of you guys, I want to turn it over to Alani. Alani, you can introduce yourself. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. Um, my name is Amani Carter, and I am an attorney here in Athens. I work with the NET, Ms. Wright, and I have been at the Public Defender's Office for um, almost six years. I graduated from the University of Georgia School of Law in May 2015, um, and I've been working with the NET since then. Um, I do this work to give people a second chance as well as the fact that I believe that people who are, just because they're unable to financially afford a lawyer, they deserve a lawyer, everybody does, regardless of their circumstances. And so this this job is really fulfilling. Um, I'm not from Athens, I've been here since law school in 2012, but it's my home and I love seeing the positive impact that the Public Defender's Office you know, makes on this community and the ability to share that information with other people because so many people don't know what we do and why we do it. Yeah, so Amani, where did you grow up before? You said you're not from Athens. Where were you from beforehand? I am from Pennsylvania, um, near Pittsburgh. It's a small town called Newcastle. It's about an hour northeast of Pittsburgh on the border of Ohio. And I went to, I did my undergrad studies at West Virginia University. And then I moved here to Athens in 2012 for law school. And, got a job after and still here. That's awesome. I'm actually from Pennsylvania originally, so I know where Newcastle is. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm always shocked when I hear people say they actually know Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ariel, but almost all my friends are from the University of Pittsburgh, so. Yeah. Uh, well, it's so good to have you, but, you know, I know that you're a lot of, you know, I guess I'll turn the same question over to you, like, how did you decide to work at a law school, and then specifically, how did you decide to work well, I too did not always know I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, a lot of people, if you make it to law school or just see movies, you see people with family members, fathers, mothers, grandparents who were lawyers and they follow in their footsteps. Um, I went to West Virginia University, my undergrad, with First, I wanted to do um, forensic science and knew that science is not my thing. And so I uh, changed my major to criminology and investigations, which is sort of similar to criminal justice, but criminology is more of the study of crime before an arrest occurs. Um, so it has a lot of you know, studies on society, economic factors, things that, you know, statistics, things that could lead to why crime occurs um, and why people do the, you know, do certain things and behaviors. And with a criminology and investigations degree, without going to grad school for some type of master's degree, a lot of your career paths are gonna be police officer or probation officer. And um, I didn't want to do that. And so it was actually in my, same as Annette, um, I know you said it took you a little bit longer, but actually my third year of college, um, I was interning at one of the very few places that WVU had internships for criminology students. I was interning at the courthouse as a victim advocate and I observed a murder trial, a trial where someone was um, on, the case was murder allegedly, um, essentially stabbing his brother. And I sat and I watched like a few days of that trial and watched the defense attorney up there presenting the case and just being charismatic with the jury and telling this story and I actually saw the defendant testify and I was like, I wanna do that. And so like Annette said, sometimes you have to figure out the path for yourself. You can have this plan and something can change. And at that moment, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, but at that moment, I knew after I saw that, I was like, that's what I wanna do. Started applying for the LSAT, which is the equivalent of the SATs, but for law school. Um, and started my journey into law school there. And um, I knew I wanted to practice criminal law. I think it's from 
the thought of representing the underdog. I knew I wanted to do that, give someone the assistance when other people think that they're, you know, they don't even look at them as human beings anymore. Um, they're always talked down on and stuff and, you know, given this name and they just forget their real name or forget that they're people or human beings and they're just given this title and this stigma based off sometimes just one mistake. And so I knew I wanted to do criminal defense. I did have this image in my head at one point of being like on a big old billboard with like Carter Law Firm and all this stuff. But um, I interned at the public defender's office throughout law school for three semesters and um, loved it. The attorneys there are all amazing. Um, they're very smart and get along well. And the, you know, the energy and environment was just really healthy. And so, and I love the work of a public defender, like I stated earlier. Um, you know, just because you don't have the funds doesn't mean you don't deserve a an attorney that's in your corner to tell your story. And so that's went on from there. Um, and I also like to share with people that, you know, after law school, if you don't know, you have to take the bar exam. And that is what gets you sworn in as an attorney so that you can practice law in court and represent clients. And I didn't pass my um, bar exam the first time. And I also like to share that story because sometimes people feel like, you know, a failure means it's not right for you, but a setback is, you know, not a, a de delay is not a denial. And um, I own that part of my law school journey um, that I think that I'm a pretty good attorney, even though I did fail the bar exam the first time. And so that's a message to all of you guys in your last couple years of high school that you know don't let a score or an exam grade define who you are you know own your journey don't let the journey own you and so yeah that's my law school journey and how i came to be a public defender So I'll just hop in real quick because I'm a full, you know, proponent of people going to law school if they're interested in it because there's so many things you can do with a law degree, not just what you see on TV in the courtroom. You know, people that work in DC, they make laws, they write laws, they, all these things you can do with a law degree, you can be a professor. Um, and what you study in undergrad does not matter. Law school, once you go in, all you need to have is the discipline um, and the dedication to um, graduating because everything else is given to you, everything else is taught to you. And sometimes they even change the way that you've studied your whole, by the time you get to law school, you're probably 18, no, you're 22 after college. So your whole 22, 23 um, years of life, if you go straight into it, they're gonna change the way that you think in law school. So don't, you can go in and study whatever you wanna study, whether it's, you know, medicine or whether it's fashion or whether it's sociology or science we have i know some of my um a lot of people do go in studying political science thinking that it's going to equate and you know correlate easily into being a lawyer and study whatever you're passionate about because what you're passionate about in undergrad and as a person is going to correlate into what type of law you practice and in order to be a good lawyer, you have to love what you do so that, cause you're gonna continue to do it because you love it. And so if sociology and history is not your thing, it's not your jam, don't think you have to study it in college just because you wanna go to law school. All law school requires is a college degree. It doesn't matter what major um, or what that degree is in. And so um, keep an open mind, you know, ask these questions to people like us, to other people so that you can know exactly you know, what you need to do to get into law school and, and how to um, pave your way. But the degree that you get from college, what it's in doesn't matter. It just matters that you got one from an accredited college.
I actually dislike this question just because I feel like when you ask me right now, I feel like I haven't had a case ever. Like I can't, but then when you're in the moment with cases, it seems like every case has something crazy or just unreal within it. Um, and I'm gonna piggyback off of that in terms of, you know, not necessarily what is your most interesting case, but it's these cases that stick out to us because it's the young ones that are in this system, the young ones that have to bring their family members and their the stuff that goes on at home that make it into the courtroom. And it's just sad and unfortunate to see. And, you know, even though, like Yannette just said, they won the case, right? Because the daughter was essentially acting in self-defense. But it's the fact that that thing even occurred, you know, in the first place. And that this 16-year-old who is 16 in foster care, but, you know, 16 years of life, but who knows what went on, right? And so I interned in juvenile court for a semester, but a lot of my work has been with adults. And so in Georgia, at age 17, you're charged as an adult. And to me, if you're under, to me, I'm only 30. So if you're under 30, you're young, okay? And so when I see these people that are 17, 19, 20, 24, to me, they're all still young. They also have a lot of life to, to live, a lot of things to learn, and for them to be in the system, not just on their first arrest, not just on their second arrest, and then sometimes on very serious charges. I'm sure people read the news of, you know, someone that's 15 just got charged with something very serious. And it's just, it's heartbreaking, but it's also a reminder that we're gonna keep on doing this regardless, you know, of that the fact that we can make money elsewhere um, or more money elsewhere. But this is why we're here because the city and the youth, they need us essentially um, to stand in their corner. And so, yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'll go and I'll be quick. Um, misconceptions about your job is that we work for the state. That's a, that's a misconception and a lie. We don't work for the state, we work for the clients. Um, and some advice for a high schooler is somewhat of what I mentioned earlier. Figure out what you're passionate about. Your life journey, it will change sometimes, um, but if you already know you're, you're in high school and you're interested in pursuing a career in law, um, know what you're interested in and know your why. Why are you going into law school? Not just because it looks, you know, Annalise on how to get away with murder looks, you know, super cool. And I love that show, by the way. Um, but figure out your personal why and what motivates you because law school is hard and it's meant to be hard. And they say like the first year they wean out the week because the law career can be hard. You can, you'll be facing challenges to where you're forced to think outside the box. And that's what law school trains you to do. So figure out your why as well as, you know, know that you're gonna need to be disciplined in your studies and um, you don't necessarily have to get straight A's, but you have to work hard because law school is competitive in terms of, especially what type of work you wanna do. Um, corporate work, usually they go after people with higher GPAs and higher grades, um, but don't let that deter you either. Um, if, you're not, if your grades aren't the best in law school, but you still have this passion for this corporate job, still apply. Um, but that would be my advice for a high school is work hard and know why you wanna to go to law school. Um, sure. So I am currently in Superior Court, but I started out in State Court. And what the difference is, is Municipal Court and State Court is um, the court where your charges go if you're um, charged with misdemeanors. And Superior Court in Athens is where if you're facing felony charges. So I started out my career three years in state court to where it my day-to-day -day work looks similar to Annette's to where we're in court almost all, almost every day. It's a lot of, it's very quick um, and you have more clients and you have to prepare. Each day you're preparing by meeting with clients, whether it's by the phone, um, preparing for the next day or preparing, preparing for court the next week. So it was a lot of, um, a lot of court appearances, but I think in state court, less of my clients were in in the jail, so I didn't do as many jail visits. Um, 
And then, but now in Superior Court, representing those charged with felonies, we do have court less, but when we have court, it's probably one week out the month to where we're in court just about every day. And then after that, we might be in court like once a week or something like that. Um, and I do have to go to the jail now more often because when you're charged with felonies, you either you're less likely to get a bond or if you get a bond, it's gonna be a, an amount, especially our clients who are poor, you know, um, they won't be able to afford it or they don't have their, their family that, that doesn't have the resources to post the bond. And so a lot of my clients are more, they're in jail more often, whether they're in Athens or in another county's jail. Um, and so, I, now my day to day is because I'm only in court about one week out the month. A lot of it is spent negotiating with prosecutors, reviewing cases, reviewing police reports, watching officers' body camera videos, and you know taking notes on that so that I can either review it with my client or relay what I've discovered to my client so we can figure out what type of decision to make. Are we going to try to negotiate some type of plea agreement? Or is this a case where the state doesn't have enough evidence or the police were completely wrong and we want to maintain or not guilty and take it to a jury trial? So um, that is a little bit of my day-to-day. -day. And every day, the duties, they're, the main duties are somewhat the same, but every day I feel like it's something different. And that's also another thing that I love about this, this job. I'm gonna go first just because I just had this question um, not too long ago from another intern. And the question was, what characteristics makes a good public defender? And I listed off a few attributes and um, I haven't written down, but I'm gonna go off the top of my head. It's essentially you have to be passionate, disciplined, determined, competent, creative, have tenacity, um, have drive, and um, have strength. So to me, those are some things that have that make a good public defender because you're getting a case from somebody who is essentially considered by most people, you know, as a bad person and as someone, and they, they're usually defined by what their charge is rather than who they are as a person. And a lot of people don't know their background. And so it's like, you have to basically fight your way through all of that and those characteristics are needed in order to be a public defender because this work is not easy and you're not and you're not paid a lot for it. So it's like, why are you here? And you're here and you have to maintain and push through. And so you have to be passionate and driven and creative and competent as well as tenacious to not give up and represent your client to the fullest extent. So that's what I would say makes a good public defender. And I'll hop in real quick to, uh, add on that to um, be a good listener, but also to, if you have one of those clients that you feel are, are holding back and you're still trying to ask these creative questions and you know, also be open to opening yourself up, you know, find something to connect with that client with to show them that you're a person, you're actually someone that, you know, they see you as a lawyer and, it's, and public defenders have the worst stereotypes that, oh, you're just trying to hurry up and get the quickest plea deal and um, but that's not true. And so it's like find a way also to open yourself up to show them that you're a person with, you know, similar things that they're going through and, you know, build a rapport and a trust relationship with them. I love that question. Um, and that today I can say, you know, almost confidently, no, not, it's not that hard. That's today, you know, five and a half years later, but day one, um, it was very hard. And that's something that you have to learn. And I say to other people, other attorneys, interns, you know, you can't change the facts. 
what what did or did not happen already occurred in the past you have an arrest and now you have a client telling you their story and just like what annette was saying about the 16 year old um in juvenile court that you know on paper she punched her mom in the face or whatever the, i forget the exact the description but on paper she punched her mom in the face and that's the story that we have but and we can't change that fact. However, our job as attorneys is to get the whole story and to represent our clients. So even though we didn't change the fact that she punched her mom, we also, it happened to where we were representing the client and we also showed the other side of the story that, yeah, that was after her mom dragged her to the floor. And so it's like, you have to tell yourself that you can't change the facts and you're gonna get this, you know, very sympathetic, person, homeless person, someone who has, you know, little to resources, family, little to no family, you're going to get this case that you might not be able to do anything with, that you're going to research, you're going to get creative, you're going to collaborate with other, other attorneys, and sometimes you just, there's not, you're not going to get the best outcome for them all the time, um, but, you know, we, we work hard for it, and we sometimes, you know, even if it's saving them a couple years in prison, they still might have to go to prison, but they're going for a couple years rather than 10 years. You know, that is still a win. Um, but so at first it was hard for me to separate myself from that because I see this person in front of me in need of help. There was nothing I can do about it. And I remember my um, first jury trial, um, I lost, it was a DUI. This woman, I think she was in her 40s or something. And it, she was on her fifth DUI in her life. And she was adamant, like, I wasn't drinking, adamant, adamant, adamant. I had a car accident, you know, the sun was in my eyes and we went to a jury trial and the jury like came back like that guilty. And I was just like, but she said she was like, I couldn't get it. And she would, but long story short, she ended up going to treatment, going into drug court. And she is probably in the best like place in her life with a job, you know, healthy, not drinking, sober, has a home, you know. So even though it was a loss, we won. But at that moment, I, I was like so baffled. And I remember the court reporter told me, you know, don't take it home with you. Um, and so that was a process to learn, you know, don't take it home with you. And now I can say, you know, I'm passionate and I care about the outcome of what happens but it is a little bit easier to not get fully involved and take it home with me. But I will say I still struggle with the young clients, um, especially the young black and brown clients. That's just where my heart lies to see, you know, 22 year old charged with like four counts of armed robbery facing so many years in prison. Like those are the ones I'm still working on not bringing home with me. Um, but I know that that's part of a bigger picture. And so I try to remind myself, you know, do what I can do and I can't control everything. So just do control what I can control and, you know, just fight hard for this case. And, you know, that's my part in the fight of the bigger picture.